you know, it could affect portions of the practice, but it, it, it could benefit the clients by bringing costs down and, and, and things more faster. So for example, if like, it takes me half the time to do a case, I might bring my costs down and my, my costs going down, I get so many more clients because again, majority of people don't hire immigration attorneys. If they see it's cost effective, they'll, they'll start doing that and it's going to help a lot of people. I mean, you know, I like to joke, you could probably do surgery watching a YouTube video too, but I don't recommend it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's the same thing is, is that I always tell clients when clients ask me, well, should I hire a lawyer? I said, well, I mean, you can do surgery by yourself. I don't think that's recommended. And you would never do it because you'd be like, boy, that's a dumb idea. Yeah. But these have the same level of life altering um, impacts, right? I mean, you've gone wrong. We've all seen the case where it went so horribly wrong. And every, you know, an attorney looks at it and goes, oh, man, so you would have just come in here. If you would have just avoided this, we could have gone in a different direction, right? Sure. I also think that immigration attorneys more, in, in a large part, are storytellers. We are at the forefront of telling people's stories. Yeah. And we do that in 601As. We do that in, you know, family-based cases. We do that in employment-based cases, in national interest, interest waiver cases. Like, we are storytellers. Yeah. And I just think that that is going to require that human component to, to really effectively and persuasively tell those stories. That's well said. I, I think that's to be jumped to something that like gets repeated. Practitioners always remember we are it, it's we're telling a story in the way we pr uh, prepare the application and send it in. And uh, you know, I tell clients that too. It's like I, I tell them, you know, your case isn't necessarily complicated, but I make it pretty and understandable so that some officer who's going to review a thousand of these is going to look at yours and not be like, oh, this is boring. Like I don't want to watch this movie or read this book um, because that's how it is. Even when I get done filling it L one after the tenth time reviewing it, I'm like, oh, this is so boring. I'm reading the same thing over again. And they're seeing the same thing, especially if you're doing pre and processing where they got to get this fast. So how do we tell a story and make it as presentable as possible so the person has more enthusiasm and the more enthusiastic they are, the more chances that they're going to, you know, respect the file rather than just like try to get it out or put it aside. And also your case gets stuck for two or three years because they don't feel like reading it or something like that. You know, it's funny you say that because the National Benefit Center is right in my backyard, right? It's in Missouri. And it's literally inside of a salt mine. They have no windows. It's inside of a salt mine, right? And I always say, if you're stuck in a windowless office for eight hours a day, right? And you've got 600 files, please entertain them. Because yeah. if you can entertain them and persuade them, chances are you're going to get the response you want. And you and, and we as, as attorneys need to be a little more creative in that. I tell you what, one of the best 601A filings I ever did we told the whole story through, um, she was a dancer and we took still photographs of her in various dance poses. And we included that as part of the waiver application. It was probably one of the fastest 601As I've ever gotten approved, but it was done in a very creative, non-traditional way that was so impactful. Cause when you looked at it, you were like, there was no way this was going to get denied because the emotion was there. The story was there. The hardship was there. Um, and, and people thought I was crazy. My staff thought I was crazy when I did it. <laughs> and then it came back and, and, and they were like, okay, we get it. We get it. <laughs> so. Nice.